So the third approach for sequence assembly is what's called overlap layout consensus. So basically, what we do here is we'll do an all read versus all read mapping. And very often, we'll do that with short k-mers, because it's quick to do that. And it tells us there's a connection, for example, between read 1 and read 5, and between read 5 and read 8. Once we've got an approximate mapping, we can generate a layout of exactly how we think the reads go together. And we call that an overlap graph. Once we've got our overlap graph, um, we basically try and resolve any, re any inconsistencies in our graph using something like a multiple sequence alignment approach. Now, the overlap layout consensus approach is good, especially if you have longer reads. And there was a piece of software that you can still sometimes find around called Nubler that was released by Roche when they had the 454 sequencer. And Nubler worked on overlap layout consensus and generated quite strong and robust assemblies. The problem with overlap layout and the reason that it's been replaced by de Bruijn graphs is that it's quite slow because of this requirement for something like a multiple sequence alignment. And it doesn't really scale well to the size of data sets that we have nowadays. And so the last approach that we're using for sequence assembly is called a de Bruijn graph. And that's really where most of the modern DNA sequence assembly algorithms have ended up focusing kind of around the de Bruijn graph approach. <laughs>